Hey everybody, um, I decided to make another video. Um, this time I'm going to be doing something that uh, took me quite a while to figure out initially. Um, it is actually taking a, a Wi-Fi or a wireless connection and joining it with a Ethernet connection so you can share your internet connection over a network using only one single uh, wireless adapter. This is really great for when you don't want to have to go out and buy several adapters, one for each machine, yet you need an internet connection to various machines. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully this will be helpful for somebody. Um, it does, I can confirm, it does work with Windows 7. I do currently use that um, on a machine to uh, in another room that is used to um, receive the internet signal from my modem which is on the next floor down and then distribute it over with three or four computers uh, on the floor that I'm on right now. So I'm just going to walk you through a quick uh, couple of steps to do it. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Um, I know it doesn't take too long so hopefully you can follow along. So uh, we'll start by first of all we'll go down to our uh, network connection down the bottom here down near the clock and what we'll do is we'll right click and go to open network and sharing center. Once we're here uh, we will go to then uh, change adapter settings. Now as you can see here I've got several different connections. The one in the middle that's disabled that's part of VirtualBox. We won't be using that for this purpose and unless you have VirtualBox installed you probably shouldn't even have it in your network connections folder anyway. Um, I will be using this, uh, this is a uh, process that's being used through Windows 8.1 Pro, the 64-bit edition. Um, like I said, it works fine with Windows 7. It actually works uh, surprisingly easier with Windows 7. Um, I can't confirm if it works with XP because I haven't really tried it, but I don't think there's really much need to use Windows XP anymore, so um, you can, you're welcome to try it, of course, but uh, I'm not going to really tackle that in this video. So, uh, I had a few issues, I tried to do this video earlier, um, but I ran into a few issues, so I thought I'd re-record it again. Um, I think I figured out what that problem was. Um, with my Wi-Fi connection, which is the connection that's received in the internet, um, I actually had in the settings, by, uh, I'll just go here, right copy, uh, right copy, uh, click, sorry, and uh, properties, um, and I will go here to the sharing tab, now there is another method to do this same sort of thing using the internet connection sharing however it's not very reliable and it's quite difficult to get working so we're not going to try that but I did notice that I had uh, the box here uh, the second one down was actually even though it's not highlighted it's grayed out it was ticked previously if you have that in your properties um, I would suggest ticking the top one to enable that then unticking that one and then unticking that one again and then hitting OK. Uh, I don't know why, but it caused an issue where I had the internet connection, the connections bridged, but I still cannot get a um, internet connection through the through the bridging. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, first of all make sure that uh, the both connections are set up to receive a. IP address through your modem or DHCP. Um, there is a way to set it so you can use this on a static connection, although it is quite finicky, so it's best to just have them set to obtain an IP address automatically. Now, those using a static IP, um, I will be getting to that stage where we will be setting a static IP, but we have to create the bridge before we can do that. So uh, make sure on your Wi-Fi, as you can see, these are all set to do to obtain addresses automatically. So we'll leave that as such, and then we'll check on the Ethernet, make sure it has the same thing. To do this, you simply just scroll down and go to IPv4, or Internet Protocol version, version 4. It's usually down the bottom of that little window, and then you click on Properties, and just make sure those two boxes are ticked. And click OK, click OK. Now, uh, this is quite a simple process. Um, what you need to do is simply 
uh, highlight the connections you want to bridge together or join together. So I want to do the Ethernet and the Wi-Fi. So obviously you just highlight both by holding Control and clicking on the devices. Once you've done that, you right click on one of them and you select Bridge Connections. And then we just have to wait for Windows to do this, it shouldn't take too long. It'll actually see if you look down the bottom here, it'll actually start to install a device which is the adapter it uses to bridge the devices. So I'll just leave that there so we can let it install. It's actually called, as you can see, the Microsoft Network Adapter Multiplexo Driver, which is a bit of a mouthful, so uh, yeah, I just call it the bridging adapter for a, <laughs> for a short, for, short name for it. So now we just have to wait for this. It says here to please wait while Windows bridges the connections. Uh, as you can see here, another connection has now appeared where it says uh, Network Bridge. Now that's the device, that's the uh, adapter joining those Ethernet and Wi-Fi connections together. So uh, we just have to give it a couple of minutes to, uh, well not a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds I should say, uh, to sort its thing. Um, now not in all cases, but in my case it does uh, keep switching between unidentified network and also my my SSID name. So if it does that, don't worry about that, that's not a real issue. Because uh, most cases what you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting a static IP. Um, so what we'll do for that is we'll just, uh, we'll, first of all we'll double click on this and as you can see it tells me that there's no internet access currently but it does here have the speed it has the it has now a 1.3 gigabit per section connection and gigabit, gigabit per second connection sorry uh, that's telling me that it's my gigabit ethernet connected and then the 0.3 is my 300 megabit per second Wi-Fi adapter so it's simply combined those two speeds together to give me a total overall connection um, it doesn't mean that you will get that speed, it's just telling me that's the total of all the connections that are bridged together. So what we'll do, we'll click on details. As you can see here, it's created an IPv4 automatic configuration, that's just a random number it chooses. Um, we're going to be changing that anyway. So we'll click close, and then we'll go down to properties. <coughs> Okay. and then what we need to do is make sure that both the Ethernet and the Wi-Fi or if you have more than two make sure they're all ticked up there in the uh, adapters section then we need to go down here like we did before checking on the um, address being automatically detected uh, before we start the bridge and click properties on IPv4 and then once we go here we click on this one and this is where we'll define our IP address. So I'm just going to, for uh, demonstration's sake, I'm going to call my 192.168.1.25. Now, if you just press Tab, it automatically fills in the subnet mask. You just, you just want to leave that as like that is. Next one is you go to your default gateway. Now, to find this, you open up your web GUI or your modem. And it's usually listed in there. Mine for my modem uh, is a 192.168.1.254. Okay, and then I press tab again, and then press tab once more. Now this is the DNS. This is to enable so the internet can be used as well. So we need to just put 192.168.1.254. As you can see, it's the same as the default gateway. Once we've done that, we don't need to put in the alternate. You can if you want, but I never do, and I don't seem to have too many dramas using that. So we'll click OK. OK, and then we'll click OK again. Now, this may take a minute um, to uh, assign that address. Uh, in some cases, I have noticed that I do have to um, disable and re-enable the connection to basically give it a refresh. But as you can see now, where it says here the auto configuration, 
Uh, the one above it says the, the random number it's given it, which is 169.254.217.222. But below that, it has the one that I specified, which is the 192.168.1.25. And of course, there's my default gateway and DNS server. So it has started this the, the uh, process, but it still hasn't quite joined it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to disable. So I'm basically turning off that adapter. Don't worry, those as you can see, those items are still staying bridged. Uh, so they are still connected to this. They've just have disconnected it, which is simulating pulling the plug out of the back, I guess. So now that's we've left it off for a couple of seconds. I'll right click and go to enable. Okay, give it a couple of seconds. It automatically brings up my SSID name again. So now what we're going to do is double click. Okay, now it still doesn't say internet access. I'm not sure why, um, but we will check the details. And as you can see here, it now has those that 169 one disappeared, and it's just left the ones that I've specified. So the address, the default gateway, and the DNS server. So we can close that now. And as you can see now, the IPv4 now says it's internet connected. So it has refreshed, it's just taken, a, taken about a minute. So now to test if the internet's working, I'm just going to load up Internet Explorer. Okay. Not sure why my computer is being a little slow today, but there we go. As you can see, it is loading the pages. I might have to. It might be possibly because I'm recording. Is why my my connection is moving quite slow. I think I might just go to Google. Something that'll load a bit quicker than a full-on Flash website, I guess. Well, that's the hope, anyway. I will say that I know the internet is connected, not only because it did say that, but also, oh, there we go. I was going to say because uh, it started to load the 9MSN website, which is uh, the default website for Internet Explorer here in Australia. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, the internet has now um, loaded. The, so I have the internet connected. Not only that, but I can actually now go to another machine that the, the ethernet is connected to either through a direct connection or through a switch or through a router something like that and the um, I will then have to go in and simulate and do the step where I go to the Ethernet connection I won't be bridging that one on the second computer I would simply be going to the Ethernet I'd be going to properties then to IPv4 and then I would specify a static IP address um, I don't think you have to, but that's what I do. Um, and make sure that when you put in the default gateway, you use the same one as we specified here. So for my example, it's the 192.168.1.254, and then I repeat that same number for the DNS server. Once I've done that, um, I just uh, save all that, and then the internet should be working on the secondary computer. Um, hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you have any more questions or if you'd like me to um, write down the steps uh, in some sort of document, just let me know. But hopefully hopefully this helps you. Um, it helped me a lot. It saved me quite a few dollars on having to purchase about four or five Wi-Fi adapters. Um, and not to mention all the other interference by running multiple ones over the network. So hopefully this enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully it's been helpful for you to to learn something new. I always, I always enjoy it. So um, yeah, have a nice day.